What's up, StarCraft fans? Today we're doing the tier list for Death is Fleeting on Dead of Night. Brian, let's hear the invitation. Dead of Night is the map where we have to destroy 151 infested structures to clean out the infestation. This would be easy were it not for the fact that the infested structures all spawn enemies at night and attack our base alongside several special infested. Void reanimators spawn from enemy buildings and revive any fallen enemy. All enemy units, including the void reanimators, revive once upon death. So we have 2-2 two, two, and evil in the Colbert estate. How are you guys? Great. Great. All right. I'm uh, doing good. I just heard about uh, watch a video on Pug Pug in Vanilla and Happy Land. I have no idea what that is, so I'll assume that's good. Okay, I'm also doing good. Actually, it's actually the first time that I've had eight hours of sleep in a long time. That's actually kind of worrying. <laughs> anyway, uh, how will we rank the commanders this week? This week, it's it's everyone's favorite dead and knife. So all your iDef players are going to be very happy about that. Definitely iDef will help, um, especially against just die and the void reanimators. The very big thing is... You're going to have to be able to defend well. You're going to have to have splash uh, because there's going to be a lot of things coming at you, especially with the void or animators around. And you have to be able to turn, have a way to get past all of those bodies and get to the void reanimators. Because if you don't stop those, they're gonna, just going to keep on re reviving the special infested. So yes. anyone who can defend well or, um, yeah, can defend well and then get into the back lines where the void reanimators are. And then uh, definitely extra points points to anyone who can clear well on top of that. Okay, how about you, Tutu? So, defense, because uh, you need to survive against double life plus reanimators, which gives them, like, double life again. And the reanimators have double life, so it's like... You need to survive. So for this one, survival is a high priority. So and I def then uh, <laughs> once you once you can survive, then you can go like clear the map and stuff. Cool. Let's begin. Abather, where do we have him? So Abather, he um, he generally has some trouble against just die, and then with reanimators, it makes it even worse because if you try to get a brutalist early, like you're gonna have to fight the stuff that you used to get the brutalist. Yeah, they so get the biomass. If you kill a lot of stuff, you're, they're gonna come back to your base. Yes. That sucks. Um, if they're Terran, they're going to send Ravens, and the Ravens will get revived with their spells again, and that also sucks. And then uh, early game, like, you don't have enough Toxic Nest to fight all the stuff. You have basically one Brutalisk and some Spine Crawlers trying to survive, and you have to focus down the, the reanimators as they come. So the early game is extremely, extremely difficult. And uh, the good thing is once you get past the early game, probably with some assistance he gets he scales really really well as it gets later into the, like as it gets uh as you get like vipers and stuff then you'll do a lot better but early game is so rough that i can only put him in c okay how about you evil Ling? I have Abathur from A to B. I mean, he's with once he gets his swarm host going, he can kind of hold in those areas. And then um, P2, but the other side of P2 is you have the increased gas costs. Uh, if you're going to be using vipers, and you should be using vipers for this because during the night, that's what you kind of want to do is just you don't really want to just kill things. You're kind of just buying time until the day comes around. Um, but you only need like maybe one viper at, at one entrance and that should be that should be fine just make sure you use this consumability especially if you have um a swarm host around use a consume on the locust that, that's like free energy for it yes he can't hold out for a good amount of time and it's it, he, he allows you to get to the late game as for tutu makes a very good point about terran and ravens uh, what you can do is definitely d avoid farming biomass early. Yeah. Um, but what you can do is you can set up a trap for the ravens. So oh. you put down, a, you put in a toxic nest in the middle of the map, and then the ravens are going to start coming because it's they, they just know that there's something invisible there. So let's go check it out. Put a bunch of spore, ca uh, spore crawlers there. Kill, kill the ravens inside the base. So that way, in order for a reanimator to get to it, they have to go past all your defenses, which are already at choke points. So the ravens are just dead unless the reanimators get deep into your base. Is that how they work? You can just put... That's what they look... That's what you can... It, they usually look for... What I know is it's not just one toxic nest. So you probably have to put two or three. Once you have that, they start coming. Interesting. I thought they only go when they... Have you tried that? Does it work? Yeah. On site of Amon, once you place Toxic Nest, they will send overseers and observers. Really? Regardless of whether or not it's actually used? 
Yes. Yep. Well, that's exactly. really cool. All right then. So that's actually pretty interesting. So what do you think about that, uh, Tutu? I think that it's like, as I said, if you don't, you're, if you don't even survive the early game, doesn't matter. There's no mid game. So yeah. his mid mid late game is strong, but if you can't even survive the early game, or if you need to completely rely on someone to help you survive the early game, I don't think that can be like anything. That's not like you doing any carrying or like doing the heavy lifting. So I would say C for fair share. You do your own. Okay. So what do you think? I definitely I understand Tutu's um uh where he's coming from because he's soloing this so definitely i mean if you have an ally that just at least contributes uh something to wall off that is something more that avatar can work with to survive the early game um so yeah i i i, I get it where what tutu is going for uh there are other commanders that have a much stronger early game to survive that first night so i definitely can see where he's going so i'll yeah i'll be willing to relent to b to c and therefore um converge on c for tutu um one thing i would definitely like to note is like the other side to vipers they're long range so you see if you see the void ranmer just yoink them into into range into your toxic nets or whatever speaking of can't you just use the vipers to pull the reanimators into cages in your base to effectively reanimator zoo. remove yeah. one of the mutators not reliable it's because not reliable you or your ally can just destroy them yeah uh yeah that makes sense that being said if you can pull them onto a high ground area that's walled off so you know player one the one at the bottom base has that high ground to their northeast and you can just wall that off with like evolution chambers maybe you can pull the reanimators there or if you're player two you can pull them on that ledge where the hunterlings come from will that not work you can, uh, that's... but if your ally flies over, it, they'll kill it, and then if they don't know what you're doing, I don't, and then... I don't take cage, I don't take zoo into consideration because your ally, if they don't know what you're doing, they're gonna break it. They're gonna see, hey, these guys are free kills, and they're gonna kill it. Do they and really the do other that? aspect is when you do create a zoo, the, I mean, other other maps, it's night, it's doable. For dead of night, you're essentially creating a do not go to zone for for any units that attack and kind of dead of night is there's stuff all over the place so i don't think you really want that on anywhere on uh, where you're operating in all right so see it is then yeah, see, sir. All right, let's move on. Alarak, where do we have him? Alarak, he suffers from the aspect that it's hard for him to defend, but he can end early. Uh, definitely recommending P3 for this. Uh, just being in the air and being to rain down death is it's very nice to get at the void reanimators even if they have just die and with all the the beams flying all over the place it definitely helps with the damage output alarak himself is very well known for holding the holding out early because he can pretty much as himself just hold hold off um night one on his own if done correctly even with just uh, die i have him from even with just die with him just alone well with p3 it's not going to be just him just alone it's going to him and mother Ther mothership mother and Therese. you're going to have your sure go ahead not mother Teresa. <laughs> no. that would be hilarious that would be very hilarious if uh, april fool's day instead of mothership is mother Teresa. but him and mother Teresa with empower me would be yeah he's it's, he's gonna he's not gonna have any problems holding holding through night one okay uh, so i have him from b to c how about you tutu alarak so he can hold off one side on his own nice then uh the problem is later on if it gets that far he can't hold every front by himself the first night, I would use uh, Alarak himself and just himself, maybe supplicants in case, but like you're going to gain so much life from killing the infested civilians that you probably don't need anything. And then the mothership goes out and starts clearing buildings like in the middle of the night, just clear the ones around the edges. And uh, later on, well, you want to clear as quickly as possible, otherwise you're going to get overrun and you're probably going to go for deadly just lots of destroyers later on to defend uh once it gets to like night 4 you're if you if you really haven't won yet then you're going to die so yeah that's uh, what i noticed about alarak puts puts <laughs> him in i put him in c all right uh, yes everyone kind of agrees that he's c so let's put him in c arcturus what do we have him he has bunkers his defense is good um 
he has tanks, so they can like target fire reanimators that are from a distance. You can also, with your high DPS of P3, can kind of pseudo zoo. You can make a pseudo zoo, which is like where the reanimators reanimate stuff, but you just kill them immediately. And like they revive a civilian and you just kill it. And they just, they're like four reanimators standing there reviving civilians and you just kill them instantly. So they're not that threatening at all. Yeah. The small issue with Manx is that like if you use ESOs, you will destroy like ultralisk and stuff or hybrids and they'll come to your base. That so is a concern. They'll get revived. Yes, they'll get revived and then they'll get they'll come to your base. And if you're not ready for such like a strong wave, then you're going to be in some trouble. So I put him in eight. How about you, Evil Wing? Yeah, for me, Octurus, I'm very confident with him. Uh, for me, it's S to A. Um, in terms of addressing the ESO, uh, just make sure to target your ESOs around the building areas, like where where the hybrids and other garbage are. It's kind of like they're garbage. Um, yeah, they're they're far, but there's there's a good amount of spacing. So just make sure the ESOs are clipping the buildings, but not not clipping extra stuff that could be reanimated and sent your way. Just focus on kill, killing the buildings. That's that's the major major thing. Just make sure Earth Splitters are actually accurate. Easy guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I mean, yes, there is there is some slop to them, but pretty much the fort there's like four corners you need to really hit on dead of night to pretty much have most of your coverage. So have four ESOs, target a target a cluster of buildings, and just kind of move cycle around your um your patches of ESOs and just try to try your best to just target the buildings. And even if even if it like only one hits every volley, just let it go and just just that way you have less to contend with on your defense side. Okay, so letter. S -S -S. Okay, so both of you guys have an A. Let's put him in A. Let's move on. Artanis, where do we have him? Artanis, Artanis is well known for not having enough firepower, and his splash, um, his splash is not desirable. Um, because of just die and void reanimators, you're gonna have to have a lot of sustained firepower, and everyone's favorite P3 is going to run out of gas real quickly. Energy uh, too. <laughs> in my yeah, well, I, when I say energy, I mean kind of mean that type of gas. But yeah, um, he's also gonna run out of gas on um, Vespian gas. I do have him from C to D, but I um, I would not recommend P3. I'd actually recommend P1. The reason why is for sustained firepower, Reavers do pretty good, and for P1, you mm -hmm. do not have to research the increased scarab capacity. So that's that's kind of like a small gas savings. All they need is the, the enhanced uh, explos explosives, and they can sustain um, their their scarab output um, indefinitely. Okay, so letter. I said C D D. Okay, how about you, uh, Tutu? So Artanis bad against reanimators, bad against just die, bad on dead of night. So E. Just straight up E. Actually, I, that's where I would have him too. Artanis is terrible. Sorry, stick spender. How about what do you think, Evelyn? <laughs> Are you gonna make uh, a case for D? Is there something he can do? Not, it's not worth it's not worth the time to to fight for Artanis. So I'll I'll concede. <laughs> All right. I, the I only just, defense here, that, yeah. For P P one, like you're already only on one base. You're like on one point five base, and in, yeah, you're like on one point five base kind of, and uh, you don't have that much money for P one stuff. So yes, yikes. Yeah. Let's see if Garden Shell. <laughs> You have a lot of minerals to work with. I mean, you can spam zealots like Yikes. with up the Yazoo. The main thing is the is the gas. So having if you have for P one, if you have two sets two reavers at each each choke, you you'll be fine. Um, it's uh, the hard part is going to be going out and clearing stuff. So it's going to be very uh, zella humane. Nice, nice in in zella humane. Sure, we get what you mean. So next, uh, yeah. I, 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 when Tutu started talking about Ar Artanis, uh, I thought I, when he when he said he was gonna add something, I thought he was gonna try defending Artanis a little bit. But <laughs> oh my no, goodness, no. we we don't <laughs> defend Artanis. So that, that's what sticks benders get when he's. That's not what here. sticks benders for. All right, uh, let's move on. Dehaka, where do we have him? So Dehaka has early game problems. Like it's really really hard to get to a point where he can actually defend, and then. 
later on when he actually has his defenses it's like the the enemies will come from all sides so it's yeah usually against reanimators the easiest thing is to just eat them but they have two lives now so if you eat them they still have another life and that kind of sucks to fight oh yeah if you have if you're using p3 you can eat them twice i guess that's kind of doable and then get guardians if you only have guardians though then the infested which have like which only attack around they'll start hitting your buildings like the aberrations with two lives they're going to start hitting your buildings so that's not good uh for offense he has uh guardians so that's nice they fly uh so but like his early game despite being the haka his early game like until he gets a critical mass of impalers or uh creep primal host for and guardians for defense he He's not that great, so I put him in C. Hmm. How about you, Evelyn? Yeah, I agree with Tutu. He's going to have, a, even though P2 allows him to not really have to focus on the early game, it's that first night is going to be kind of shaky for him because uh, either he's relying on our ally or it's like, oh, Void Reanimator, one eat. Uh, I can't, I'm, I'm full now, sorry. Uh, let me go massage my stomach for a while, while I, uh, so I can eat the next one. Um, but once <laughs> he ropes. has his, once <laughs> the day comes, ar- oh once he comes around, comes yeah. around to the next day, I mean, use your pack leaders, clear it. Glevig will clear a whole bunch of buildings, but just try to be efficient and try not to hit, um, stuff you don't need to be hitting, um, because they're going to be reanimated. So just use his line, line skill, clear the buildings, all the buildings that line up. And then after that, um, yeah, uh, try to just maybe send, if you have your guardians out, focus down the buildings that didn't, uh, didn't get initially cleared or if they are just kind of weirdly placed where you can't multi-clear them then just do your best to get get the mission done with yeah uh, if you're going going past going past like night four then you're gonna start feeling the pain really i thought he scaled up but either way uh so letter i said b to c okay so both of you agree with c let's put him in c but just to go back if you guys watch that video where i play with the Hawker burger I, I told you despite the fact that the hawk the Hawker got more kills and more building kills than swan did i still think that the fact that swan held down the first night makes Swan Static Defense the MVP rather than anything the Hawk did because the Hawk can easily go in front of the defense mm-hmm. and form kills but keeping us alive is the most important thing until the Hawk goes online yes. anyway yes the Hawk goes in C Phoenix where do we have him Phoenix he's a great brawler the angry zealot I mean they just die and you just keep on killing uh and then once you see Void Reanimator you click on Void Reanimator um, if angry zealot goes down, a, a more angry zealot comes out and just keeps on rolling. Um, definitely don't just make angry zealot though. Um, have angry zealot, Talus, since I mean you're already going gateway, and then have warbringer. Warbringer is going to help. Um, definitely help keep things a little clean at the choke points. I have him from A to B. B two. All right. How about you, two two? Phoenix is bad on dead of nights because he. He can't hold many sides, especially with P2. Uh, it's hard to hold even two sides because you can only have Kaldalis on one of the sides. And uh, with reanimators coming from multiple sides, it's going to be hard to um, defend. And also, not just Phoenix, but for every commander, during the daytime, the reanimators are going to be not near your front door, and they're going to revive the infested that burned from the sun. So you basically need stuff at home to fight off trickles All while you're trying to clear. And Phoenix, with P2, can't do that once the other doors open, or he can't do that as well. It's going to be really hard to manage all that and uh yeah so i put i put phoenix in d Ooh, that's pretty far hmm yeah so, so far from my taste yeah i can i mean just thinking about it, i would be willing to to put phoenix like in he has he has the same alaric problems so first night he'll be able to do right then once more more um more the choke points start opening up then the t- the timer starts going for him and he can be in a lot of trouble once it gets to um, night four. Speaking uh, of, in terms of what sorry, makes Alarak Tutu, what makes Alarak a clear tier above Phoenix here? Above, oh, yeah. Alarak has Alarak's AOE a hero, and he uh, has a mothership. The mothership flies. So he has so, two heroes essentially, and the flying and also unit. the death fleet 
the death fleet is really good because air units are good against infested since like aberrations can't hit them and like the only thing that hits air would be the infested marine and they can get killed like easily kind of uh also overcharge is good don't scout if you have mother do the same thing even though. if you have mothership alone you can like clear all the build that the structures around the edges of the map without much resistance don't whereas it takes a while to get scouts mm, so it's so you're saying it's, it's a whole tier above because scouts take a long time to build compared to the destroyers. Yes, that's or carriers or scouts, or like carriers, either one. Scouts. Like it takes a while to get to that point. Mm. Whereas for clearing, you just need a mothership. You don't need the destroyers. You just add them later because you don't need to spend money on other things. So you'll have money for the destroyers later. Okay, that makes sense. So he is he is worse than Alarak, but he is is he a whole tier? Does that make him a whole tier worse than Alarak? What do you think, Eveling? I don't think that makes him a whole tier worse than Alarak. It, so I can see the argument that uh, bottom that of Alarak C comes out. Wait, wait, yeah, bottom wait. of C. Is actually, fine. actually, Tutu, is uh, is your Alarak already bottom of C, or is he somewhere no. in the middle of C? Okay, so is there a uh, case I, to I, make? I, I, yeah, I haven't placed them like with like rankings within the same tier. I I yeah. haven't placed. I haven't ranked them. I definitely agree that Phoenix is worse than Alarak here. Just that's just a question of is he a whole tier worse than Alarak, or is he just really at the bottom of where the same tier of Alarak is? I, I I think like for Phoenix, if you want to defend multiple fronts, you need to be good at using him. Whereas Alarak, you just need to control a hero and wave arms occasionally. And then by the time it gets to okay. like, you have to defend two sides, you have like a huge death fleet, or you can bring the mothership home during the night and you have two, you can defend two sides like that. For Phoenix, you have to make sure like your champions are in the right places, you have enough shells, etc. if you're using P2. Yeah. If you're using P1, then you have to make sure you have the right stuff in the right places. Okay, well, so ultimately- I definitely do, do not disagree with that. Yeah, that's so, Usually when people play P2, they're either making just Kaldalis or Kaldalis and two other champions. Um, in my opinion, you should be making all the champions and you should be hotkeying three champions onto one hotkey, three other champions onto another hotkey. And then therefore you have them defending at least two show points pretty readily. And then Phoenix himself, uh, the Dragoon suit, Praetor suit, hopping between wherever needs uh, reinforcement. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely what Tutu is saying, Alarak is a lot more straightforward because just Mothership and Hero. Okay, if you guys agree with D, let's put him in D. On and Horner, where do we have him? On and Horner, it's the same grade for every Dead of Night mutation because they do very <laughs> well offense and they're trash at defense. So they're so good at offense that they do their part, which is C. Amon's on a timer, C. yeah. How about yep. Eveling? Same, same point. Just a, just again to address the defensive part about um, making Han and Horner work. Definitely get your Hellbats going. Um, have have that upgrade so that they can start instilling the fear. Um, that helps buy a lot of time, uh, at, especially on the first night. Hellbats, Widow Mines. I, I mean, you can go Reapers, but uh, yeah, Hellbats are, are definitely going to help help with the defense. And Salvage, put definitely have some points in the double Salvage. That'll help uh, curb the the bleeding on that's going to happen and allow you to build up your Strike Fighter platforms. And then from there, yeah, put aim on that timer. Definitely go don't, don't send your Strike Fighters out just for one building. Try to hit between the buildings. And in some in some spots with one strike uh, fighter sortie, you can get four buildings at a time. So definitely be very mindful of that. Would you CDD. prioritize the hellbutt upgrades and the hellbutts over airstrikes? Air strike, air strike production. Um, it's we we talked about if you can't survive, then there's no point getting getting any further. So that's not their job wanna, though, right. right? That's not their job. Their job is to put aim on the timer. So you're saying that it's important to be a bit more well-rounded than it is to really key in on what you're good at and what your job is. It well, depends what your ally's doing. Uh, I guess that's true. Yeah, it depends exactly. on what your ally's doing. Okay, so you'll 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 see if your ally needs help on defense, then you get a bit of a bit of hell butts in there. But if they're really good at defense, cost, just go all in. It on... doesn't cost that much gas to do it. the the big The big limitation to strike fighters is gas. Is gas. Yes. So, yeah. So. I mean, once you you just need to get so. the fear upgrade, and then from there, that's maybe at that costs at most one strike fighter platform. So you're delaying one earlier, but I mean, yeah, you're you're still putting aim on a timer. So just get it help. 
help their ally out. It delays. I mean, we keep on bagging that Han and Horner's defense sucks. That allows them to have some degree of defense and contribute for the first night. And then from there, you should be able to clear clear all the buildings out before before day four. All right. So letter. I said CDD. All right. So both of you are good with seats. Put them in C. Carax, where do we have him? Carax. He's super great at defense. Uh, with P3, super great at offense, as long as he can get uh, Observer or Mirage out. And yeah, it's just make sure, don't be one of those Caraxes that is not going to um, use Solar Lance. <laughs> I see too many characters that just build their defense and use only solar ants to defend. You want to use that on offense to clear buildings. It's it's super great against buildings. I have him from SA. Okay, how about you, uh, Tutu? Uh, the only reason why he's not S for me is his early game lack of AOE. Mm -hmm. So you might, if you don't build your buildings in a good like. If you if you don't have good SimCity, you're gonna get uh, you're gonna might you might get overwhelmed by all the infested with all their lives and stuff. So I put him in A. Okay, so not Yem is therefore not S. Let's put him in A. Prestige wise, we recommend the third one, right? Absolutely. Yes. All right. Kerrigan, where do we have him? Kerrigan. Um, I use P1, but I've seen P2. P1 mass lurkers allows you to kill everything that's on the ground really really <laughs> quickly. And whatever is revived just dies. Later on, even though it's P1, I think you should mass mutalists to kill buildings. This so, is the first time I've seen uh, that prestige recommended unironically. Please continue. Uh, I, I think I've said this for the last time we had either Just Die or uh, Void Reanimators. I forgot which one. I, I said the same thing. So Dead of Knights, her P1 defense is really good. Um, so the special infested kind of matter because it's like if there are chokers, Kerrigan will get choked and you don't have much to save her. That's a problem. Uh, the other three are not a problem. So it's kind of luck. Uh, by the time Nidus Worms, like, well, Kerrigan herself can take care of a worm yeah, as well. She can she's snipe so worms. Strong if there are no chokers. Um, I put her in B. All right. How about you, Eveling? I actually have Kerrigan from A to B. Um, one thing, yeah, P1 is really good for defense, and you don't have anything that can really clear your keep creep tumors uh, due to the layout of uh, Dead of Night, so that allows you to really hunker down. Um, regarding chokers, so for P1, in order to deal with that, um, you get the Overlord Ventral Sacks, or it'd be good to have the Speed and Ventral Sacks. Uh, if if she gets choked, you pick her up. That breaks the choke. Oh wow, you can do that. You can do that. Oh wow. Uh, it, it, pretty much any any commander that has has um, a transport unit. I, yeah, I do that for Minx a lot. So if my Royal Guard gets um, choked, just get the Intercessor out, pick her up, all good, drop it out. That makes sense. Metabax Choker. can save Tychus, so it makes sense that other transports yep. can save heroes. Yep. Oh yep. my goodness. Metabax is kind of um, different, but... Yeah. yeah. Kind of, yeah, but... Yeah, kind of same concept. Conceptually, it's a transport. Well, it's it's really not. It's just the, the, the unit. The, the unit that saves the hero. <laughs> anyway. Well, yeah, just to elaborate more on it, what transports do is essentially removes the unit from the game. So kind of like um, how uh, Double Edge, it you can like send out a whole bunch of uh, Sinic Orbs with Ascendants, pop them in a uh, War Prism, they won't take the damage. So kind of kind of that same concept. All right, letter. A to B. Um, I can, I, I'd say B. you can, rec uh, any Prestige can make, make it work. Um, P1 definitely has the holdout capability and the damage capability. P2 um, is zappy move, nice. Um, P3 is uh, using the crushing grip that allows you to kind of hold things in place. And then, um, I mean, if you do it right at the at the frontline units, the other units in the backline are just kind of waiting around because they're getting body blocked by it. And speaking of body block with P2, P3, P0, you got Omega Worms, which are fantabulous at um, fantabulous. blocking up the chokes. Fantabulous. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Both of you agree with B, I think. I think, mm -hmm. I think the two said B. So let's put one B. Prestige recommendation, I think it's the first one. You can also use the second one if you want, if you prefer that. I think I like the first one though, because the, the machine gun lurkers sound really nice here. Nova, where do we have them? Nova, P1, you can <laughs> turn out liberators and tanks and just hold almost indefinitely even if you got uh even if you got um void randomers out they'll just keep on making it and you keep on padding your kill count p3 you just send nova out and blow stuff up unob unobstructed and nova p3 it, it's kind of like <laughs> nova p3 hot and hoarder but with defense <laughs> pretty much yeah it puts aim on a timer nova i have from sa how about you two uh 
I remember last time with with just just die yeah. on longest on the longest night. Yeah. I couldn't use P three because of like Long there range. are so many enemies. Yeah, like I said, that's so what I, that's what I said. I had to use, yeah, yeah. I had to use P one, and it was actually harder than I thought. But um, yeah, I think with any sort of like any sort of body, defense, you know, you know, your ally doesn't even have to do any offense. They just throw bodies. I think you can do so much that I think she still deserves S, even if it's not top of S. <laughs> I, I can see that. I can see. I I, I personally had her in A because of the aforementioned the, the off the, the defense is so tough that the units need something else to help defend against the enemies. But if both of you are okay with S, I can put her in S. Are we okay with S? Uh, yeah. yeah, but I wouldn't. Yeah, that's later. That's for later. But All yeah, right. S. <laughs> nice oh, S, I, I do suggest that you do not use the nuke where there are air enemies so that they don't get revived. That makes sense. All right, let's put her in S. Rainer, where do we have him? Uh, Rainer has really strong defense and this time they don't have long range so your bunkers and stuff can hit them uh without like i think with long range they um only your tanks can reach them and your bunkers are just there so your tanks don't get hit uh rainer can mass tanks with regardless of prestige uh you shouldn't use one but you <laughs> can use zero or three mass tanks first and get air units uh it's like manx but slower but i still put him in a all right how about you evil link i have rainer from a to b as tutu said his he he's very good at the defense defense portion um you can i in my opinion you can make any of his procedures work for this um p p0 or p1 is going to be a little bit of struggle but i, I can see ways of making it work um p2 is going to be pretty damn good because of stim tanks uh you can really pad your kill count like that p3 um yeah you just bunker up or uh, just uh, bunker up at home and then send your dust wings out just have them focus focus all the buildings same with hyperion and uh, it essentially put Tame on on a timer. Essentially. So A to B. All right. Both of you agree with A. Let's put him in A. By the way, guys, if you're using Terran Commanders, you can always just fly your buildings to the corner and just wait for top bars. That, unless, of course, one of you is uh, Tychus. Tychus needs that. Uh, you need a top bar for this to work to snipe the buildings. Tychus doesn't have Objection. those. Objection. Objection. Revived air units will go to your corner. Oh, yeah, that's true. So don't, don't destroy air units. So there we go. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's move on. Stepboy, where do we have him? Stepman, kind of his usual spot. Um, it's dead of night. You can make um, you can make P three work really well. And the thing is, it's yeah, things will keep <laughs> if the void reanimator keeps on coming back, um, reviving things, and you keep on killing it. It just gives more best oil to your ultras. So it's kind of perpetuating itself in some sense. Um, re recommend P two P or P three. Uh, I have S uh, Stepman from S day. Okay, how about you, T two? Uh, I also recommend P three, but P two can also work. Uh, the only issue is when it gets to the later nights, like you have to defend two fronts. You can't control your ultras with F2. You have to like manually pull them mm -hmm. back so they stay in zones and yes. so that they don't get too far. But yes. uh, aside from that, he's still really strong. So I put his statement in A. Okay. Both of you agree with A. Let's put him in A. Prestige wise, the third one's recommended or the first or the second one, the other. Third one, the second one. Third first one. one's bad one. because he needs super duper Gary. Or at least Super Gary. Stukov, where do we have him? Stukov is an interesting place because he needs a long time. He, he has good defense, but it takes a while to get there. And uh, if you're using P1, you need you have tanks. The problem with like P1 mass tanks is that you suck against air and you need diamondbacks. But diamondbacks, um, they're, if they're in the front, they get hit a lot and it's, they, they regen really slowly. Uh, if you're using P3, then you can hit air, but it takes a while to get enough bunkers. Plus, your ally is going to take up space, so you can't build all those bunkers. Um, I'm not sure where to put him. I because he does have a bunk, does have bunkers and tanks that can like defend really well. I think I just I'll put him in B. Okay. How about you, Voling? Yeah. Uh, it it lines up with my reasoning for Stukov. I have Stukov from B to C. You can make any of his procedures work, even P2. Um, the I, I have Stukov a little lower than Rainer because Rainer has mules to really boost his economy so he can really um, get the defenses set up and then eventually get his offense really, really going. Stukov takes a little more time just because he doesn't have that economy boost. So yeah, B to C is for me. So I think we're going to verge on B for Stukov. Okay, let's put him in B. So you heard the recommendation. You can use the first one or third one. Uh, let's move on. Swan, where do we have him? 
Swan. So Carax was an A. Swan, in my opinion, is definitely the S. Uh, P2 definitely recommended. Uh, his enhance, I mean, it's it's somewhat of enhanced, but it is enhanced defenses or uh, turrets are going to do great because the flaming beddies splash. If you got air problems, uh, the spinning dizzies are great against that. And then you just make sure everything's good on the home front, build up your fleet of rates and start sniping buildings. And and also um, definitely get your laser drill uh, upgrades too. Uh, just uh, uh, definitely go for um, the spots where a bunch of buildings line up according to the laser drill. Um, do your best to not really clear too many of the baddies because again they're the gonna get reanimated toward you. But uh. yeah, uh, you're gonna be able to 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 handle it pretty well with as long as you take into those strategies and yeah. All right. How about you, Tutu? Uh, he has the AOE. His only issue is stanks, which I believe I think someone mentioned. I've never tried this, but I think you can mass you make a few Thors and use the ability on the stanks and i guess with a lot of tanks then you can take out the stanks or you throw um some factories in front so they have something to hit while they get hit by your buildings uh if there aren't stanks then it's like even easier so yeah i put them in s okay <laughs> hold you guys wouldn't rates be fine against stanks i mean yeah you can use a 330 millimeter barrage with a thors but I mean, if you're making race already, they'll pretty much delete the stanks pretty quickly. Kind of agree with that, actually. I guess so. Yeah, I think race are better. All right, let's put Swan and S. Tychus, where do we have him? I guess uh, he has the same he has the same choker problem, except he doesn't have overlords, so you can't you can meta back, but how many times can you really do that? Um, if there aren't chokers, then he can fight. He can survive the early nights easily. Later on, it's a little more difficult. Uh, Blaze can probably stay outside and burn things, and that's cool, I suppose. And because they have two lives, I think they burn for even longer. So it, it ensures that the trail continues to blaze, and that's good. Uh, if it gets too late, though, then there might be some trouble. So I put Tychus in B. All right, let's put him. Oh, wait. Uh, bo both of you have him in B? Oh, wait. How about Eveling? I have, I mean, Tychus, for me, uh, channel your inner pyromaniac. Um, all his procedures have Blaze, get it? Um, I've seen some comments where people have said Blaze is not good for um, Dead of Night and you should what be are using they nuts on? instead. And I said, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, In just, what world yeah, is Blaze not good for Dead of Night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I at that point I was, I choose not to argue with them because you, there's no way logic is gonna get through. Um, but yeah, he, he is similar to Amalarak. He is on a timer, but just because of Blaze, that brings up a whole tier above Alarak. Yeah. Um, just don't let don't let the map get too far into the number of knights, and you'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, fire good. Um, Letter. In terms of the um, A to B. Okay, so both of you have in B. Let's put them in B. Warazun, where do we have him? Oh wait, uh, uh, Prestige is the second one, right? Second Prestige. I think anyone uh, works. Anyone works? Anyone that works. Okay, that makes sense. Because yeah, first one that you yeah, have more you have abilities, no Prestige, you still have everything that you need. Third Prestige, you still have the big dog, so that's all fine. Let's move on. Warazun, okay. where do we have him? Warazun... So she has a very good means of of essentially keeping the the choke points open or closed by putting the dark pylon around the rocks. So the first night is yeah, that's gonna be open, but you can do dark pylon wall, just put all your buildings, cyber cores, and block it off. Um, maybe leave a little little slot open so that you can stick a stalker or a centurion in, so that way you can open and close that. That hole, and then once you have your Stargate open, then definitely start getting your Corsairs out. So I would recommend at each choke point have one Stargate at each choke point, and then rally um, the Corsairs out. So even if um, even if you're uh, kind of not able to manage it all, just just pump out the Corsairs, and then you'll have things that are putting D webs around and buying time during the night, so that you can make it turn to make it to the day. After that, start clearing. Uh, P3 is the most logical choice because yeah. once you P3 is the stop, only choice. Um, it's the Vorzen is one prestige. Like Let, let's let's finish this discussion. Vorzen is one prestige. I guess. Yeah. All right. Okay. How about you, Tutu? Really? Vorzen is bad on Dead of Night. Uh, so if you dark pile on wall you're going to cage your ally uh, cage your ally so they're not going to be happy and uh the problem is except maybe if they're allied special infested are detectors 
So you're going to have to keep fighting, reviving, invest, special invested. Yeah. So like if they're hunterlings, they will jump into your side and then you can kill them and they can't get revived. Okay. But then the other three, they're fighting from the outside. So they will con constantly provide vision or detection for the regular infested to slap your buildings. And, and Spooders will disable. AOE is trash. <laughs> There's no AOE. So I think you need Void Rays to actually shoot down stuff. But if you're using void rays, then like you have to get out of the cloaked areas once in a while to like get to attack. And you then infested marines, which have two lives, will start building up. You don't have enough black holes to keep doing this. So yeah, um, I put Vorzun in D. D. Oh, that's pretty bad. <laughs> are you are you gonna make a case, Evilly, for your uh? Okay, D, I don't think she is that that far down. I wouldn't, yeah, I'd be willing to consolidate to C, um, but yeah, being able to... Okay, so the, the, okay, the so discussion the, is... The other part... Okay, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. The, uh, I guess so, the, only, the only thing we have to argue is whether Vorzun's a whole tier worse than Dehaka, uh, Alarak, Abathur, and Han and Horner. I kind of see, I kind of see Vorzun being a whole tier worse than them. All of them can at least do something. Uh, can't I say mean, the same for it's yeah, surviving. Surviving the first night for Vorozin, I don't think is going to be that much of an issue. And uh, again, it's when I say dark pile on wall, I don't mean like you're going to completely wall off. So usually use one of the sides to be as your pseudo entrance and exit point. Um, use um, warp in either stalkers or centurions and just plug up plug up that area when the day comes up out then send them out and then that way your ally can get out um, if you're going to time stop don't time stop ever during the night time stop during the day and then that i mean just that extra extra bit allows you to clear that much more use um, one of her ways to really clear fast is using stalkers and then so you blink uh, focus down the buildings and then blink to the next port just focus down the buildings just do that as with the time with on top of time stop and all the dts that they're gonna be or shadow guard that are being spawned from it you can clear quite a bit pretty quickly i mean it's you sh at most if you're focusing on getting all the buildings you should be able to clear by by night four does that work too too can you clear by night four like your 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 time stops will not have great clearing power until you have at least twelve shadow guards. So that's at least twelve minutes. And well, before is like then, the the, day two. the problem is like if you're making corsairs, what's killing reanimators? Because your the whole point is just like you're surviving on the outside, but that's it. You're 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 trying to not die, and then you still the reanimators aren't really dying. So I don't I don't know what that I think void rays would be better but still like she has no AOE what's her AOE she has nothing also you bring if another factor is you bring ravens so you invite ravens to your house oh yes also are very annoying sucks. very annoying revived reviving ravens on top of that that's a different thing but yeah I mean if I'm fighting Terran her lack of AOE if I'm fighting Terran I have worse problems or worse problem you know what that is well something to consider if you're fighting ravens or if you're fighting Terran make a dark archon mind control the raven take it out of the equation that way it can never be revived and you have a raven that's a lot of gas oh my goodness Yes. Uh, that's mm. a lot of gas. It's a lot of gas. I mean, okay, with all this, is affording uh, two or three dark archons that are staying in the back lines to just do on beyond raven control? Is that really three dark archons? That hard? Is a thousand you gas. You need to go down. And you're you on three gas. You need to go gas, down the, the twilight way. path when you're going down the stargate path. Yeah, you need to go the twilight council 100 gas, then dark shrine 200 gas, or 300 gas. Then you need to get the dark archon researches. I think that's 200 gas each, or no, 350 combined. It's 100 each. 100. Oh, 100 each. 100. So that's 200. So 200 plus the aforementioned 300, that's 500 already before you make any units. If that's your fear making two Dark Archons, that's 700 gas, 1200 gas, and you're on three gas the whole game. Oh, that's super rough, man. That's just to stop a raven. <laughs> the ravens. <laughs> Which will Not probably oh, get baby. to your base oh, and harass you before multiple. you get the research I'd rather, done. I'd rather, I'd rather make like a couple cadence on my nexus. 
right. Well, uh, I mean, this is again all an argument. Is she really D? I think he's D. I mean, you say okay, and then you and then the other aspect I want to hit is you say there's she has no splash. So, um, Shadow Guard and Dark Templars are not splash. They're not splash. They're multiple. They're multiple targeting units. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't they, say they splash. <laughs> splash. The confusion okay. is the only area. splash. The confusion is, is splash. Okay. That's the um, only splash she has. Or P2. P2 Disruption yeah. Web. Disru uh, second Prestige yep. Disruption Web is Splash. She, yeah, that's true. That's right. She does not have Splash, which is really sad because she has Black Hole, which combos any with any sort of Splash. But she doesn't have. Oh, Corsairs. There we go. But Corsairs don't Corsairs shoot down. Splash, but that's only air. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Cors Corsairs are really good if you have Black Hole, but most of the enemies are on the ground. Most of the threats are on the ground, so you should probably worry about the things on the ground. Uh, I think I think D makes okay, sense. Okay, so I'll just say for the record, for solo, yes, I agree, she's D. For duo, I I I do not disagree with D. Mm, okay, uh, I don't yeah. Vor, uh, Vorzen only has one prestige, the third prestige, but it doesn't matter because Vorzen is bad either way. So, Zagara, where do we have him? Oh, uh, she's better than Artanis, but there we go. Not by much. Not by much. You need bio launchers. Um, hey, <laughs> you need bio launchers yep. for sure. That's probably what you'll spend all your gas on. You just make bio launchers, and then uh, you you can clear during the day. You can help out, but like going deep into bases is kind of hard. Having to fight multiple fronts will be hard as well. Um, I put Zagara in E. How about Eveling? I have Zagara from C to D. Yeah, she's gonna struggle. Um, all of her prestiges are gonna. I have a, yeah, it's not going to be easy, but definitely make use of the bio launchers. It'll, they definitely will do a lot of work for you in in terms of defending and killing off the special infested. And um, definitely you'll be able to hit hit the void reanimators. So make use of those uh, with, with your bane links, right click them on the buildings. Don't, don't waste them on trying to uh, clear stuff. Just kill the buildings as quick as you can. She is... A, another commander that's not going to be too happy if you get past um, uh, day four. What do you think, Tutu? The... So, like... is she? The, I guess the question is, is she a whole tier above Artanis? Yep. I can't... I'm not... I think Artanis is worse. He Artanis, have is worse. Artanis is definitely worse. Artanis is definitely worse. I don't... I don't think... So. I don't disagree. Uh, you answer your own question, right? Uh, her Banelings also against... Uh, her Banelings are not as useful because they'll be wasted against invincible units. So the splash yeah. from Banelings won't be as good. She can clear kind of all right. Uh, much better than Artanis. Um, she does have Splash. If you place your buildings right, she can deal good damage. Okay, yeah, all right. D, I think, okay. is fine. We're not going to mention Prestigious because if, because she, if she's that bad, it doesn't doesn't matter. Not P1. Yeah, she's <laughs> going to she struggle with all of them. Yeah. Zeratul, where do we have him? Zeratul, P2, Cage Artifact, grow stronger, start killing things en masse. Um, SDA. How about you, T2? Uh, same thing. I think I only had I only needed one try for this one. Uh, you need abrogators for sure. Yes, so abrogators. You need abrogators plus shield guards and then mass cannons. And eventually you'll have like 10 fragments or something so strong that nothing can stop you. Oh, but uh, I also made DTs because DTs, you can like right click the reanimators. That so, makes sense. All right. Uh, yep. On top of the usual cannon, Cannon's monolith, good. abrogator, shield guard defense. I All put right. serotonin S. No, no dispute there. Do we have a double S? No, this All mutation's right. not that easy. Oh, by the way, prestige, you want yeah. the second prestige. Uh, who's top of S? Zeratul. Yeah. I think Swan is much better. Swan's much better? Okay, then. Okay, if, if, uh, if both of you agree that Swan's better. I don't. I think Swan is... Zeratul uh, scales up as time exactly. goes on. Exactly. That's... So yeah, that's he true, can make true. he can make like if you do get to like night five he can make he can make it feasible. Swan has free repair. That's what he is going for mm -hmm. and rates and rates. So it puts aim on a timer. But uh, the other aspect, Zero Two does put aim on a timer in a way too. Yeah, that's why they're both S. So we're kind of just uh, yep. splitting hairs here. They're both. Yeah. I can see both of them having a case, but yes, Nova's at the bottom. Nova's at the bottom. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think <laughs> I think for the for the sake of all all the eye deafers, there are, most of them have more experience with swan so yeah i think that's going to be the the better pick for those most of them don't have experience with zero tool okay. especially abrogator positioning and stuff there's an 
Yeah. Uh, regatta yeah. positioning? What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you, you figure that? You need to leave spaces so that their things shoot out. Otherwise, it'll go around and it takes too Oh, long. right, right, right. That's what you meant. All right. I thought you meant you had to put them like in a, in a, at a specific distance. Or, okay, that mm -hmm. makes sense. Uh, so Swan's top of S. He's easier. I think so. All right. Yes. I agree. Swan is definitely easier. You won't get the most kills, especially if you have an ally who goes beyond your static defense to farm kills. But... You have the gift of stability. Swan's S uh, stands for stability. W stands for winning. A stands kill, for kill, awesome. Kill number means nothing. Sorry? Kill number means nothing. Yeah. I, I don't know why that's a N that's a stands for N stands for never losing. And the other N stands for nothing. It stands for nothing. So that's what Swan means, guys. Nine. Yeah. Nine. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you want kill count, Tychus is Blaze is the is. That's the how you like get that. Yeah. If you want to farm kills, Tychus Blaze is pretty good. Anyway, yeah. uh, Zertul second at S, then Nova's S is at the bottom. Who's top? Mm -hmm. Who's top of A? Top of A. Uh, I say Carax. Carax. I mean. Oh yeah, I agree. Hundred percent. Yeah, the eye death commanders, right? Then Turus. Or Stet Boy. I think mm -hmm. Stet Boy actually, because he does buff his ally and does have the green zone to heal everything. Yep. Just giving yep. all everyone longevity. Yes, set boy. Yeah, better hold out. Okay. Yeah. And then Arcturus and Rainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yep. Uh, top of B. Pretty intrigued by Kerrigan actually. The first prestige. It does have the yeah, gift of I, longevity. I, I, yes. Although it and doesn't scale a... like an S commander, but that's why Kerrigan's not S. It's one of our few times we can actually recommend P1 Kerrigan. Anti-air might be also a slight issue, but they don't really send strong airwaves on this on this map. So not as much of a concern. Malignant creep hydralis, they they rip apart air pretty pretty well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kerrigan top of S. Or sorry, top of B. Uh, who's second in B? Tychus for early game strength. Yeah, okay. Tychus then. And kill count. And kill count. <laughs> Okay. That's all that matters. That is all that matters. Uh, who's top of C? I think the Haka? Han and Horner? Feels, yeah, it's like Han and Horner is almost kind of guaranteed that if, he, if they make it past the defense portion, they'll be able to clear the map pretty solidly. Uh, the Haka and Avatar are not completely solidified. We can put them in a tie if it's too, if it's too nitpicky. I I think I, I'm kind of I'd say Abathur is below Dahaka and Han and Horner. Now who's better, Dahaka or Han and Horner? I'm still kind of reasoning through my mind. Han and Horner is kind of ally dependent. It all depends on who's defending for Han and Horner. That is true. Dahaka provides his own defense. All right, Dahaka mm -hmm. it is then, and then Han and yep. Horner and Abathur. Yeah. Then Abathur and then, then Alarak. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is fine. Uh, who is top of D? Vorazun? Because Vorazun is... Mm. Vorazun no, was I'd, trying I'd, to get into C. I'd say, I'd say Phoenix. Oh, Phoenix. Vorazun. Okay, Phoenix, then Vorazun, then, then Zagara. Uh, All right. Then Artanis in E tier. All right, that sounds like a fair... That sounds like a fair ranking. Do we have any combinations of B to E who are better than Nova on her own? I think, yeah. Nova would have a hard time defending, I think. So some, some something like Kerrigan and Hot and Horner would be better than Nova. Yeah. Yeah. I, Who else? Dehaka and hmm. Tychus. Tychus gets Dehaka to the late game, then Dehaka late game takes over. On Horner plus anyone with defense. Hot and Horner plus any defense. That's true. Yeah, so that's... that's. I'm looking... <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. I'm looking at P1 Kerrigan and P1 Artanis. Like, yeah, the, the Melodic creep, creep along with P1 Reavers. Mm. That would be interesting. And that would yeah, be interesting. I'm kind of curious curious to see what that does. I'm and sure Stix Bender yeah. is I'm sure Stix Bender is turning in his grave right now somewhere. <laughs> he doesn't like Reavers. <laughs> I think he prefers the Immortals for infested missions because they shoot they shoot <laughs> yeah. faster. Anyway, that's uh, not relevant yeah. here. Uh, yeah. but are they better than Nova on her own? I guess yes, because Nova's defense kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. Not kind of sucks, but just you need Swan level defense to really hold out. You need Carax level defense to really hold out. Actually, now that I think about it, is Nova really above Carax here? Does Carax not deserve an S? <clears throat> uh, the argument that Tutu made for his lack of splash. Lack and of I, splash. I can see that. Get Colossus? Yeah, it's because, yeah, make Colossus, but uh, most pubs Early don't game. even know Colossus. Uh, that's true, that's true. Early game splash. That makes sense. All right, that's fair. Uh, okay. So, any other any other synergies aside from Hot and Horner plus defense? That's how good Hot and Horner is on offense, guys. Hot and Horner plus anyone on defense, anyone on defense is S tier. 
Uh, Kerrigan, Abathur. Kerrigan, Abathur. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Kerrigan gets Abathur to the late game. Then Abathur takes, takes over. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And then and you still got Omega Worms. Omega Worms. Because, yeah, Abathur can plug up the entrances with Omega Worms. Oh, Kerrigan P1 and Stukov P3. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you've seen yeah. how strong that is, right, Tutu? We played that yeah. we played that on uh, the Poopagator on the Lock one. and Load. Yeah, that was pretty good. Kerrigan and Stukov P3. That's pretty good. All right, I think that's I enough think synergies, guys. Watch Tutu's channel. I will link it down below, and I'll see you guys next time.